to another episode of Jack Snacks. Today I'm going to teach you how to play the solo you just heard me play over the Grateful Dead song, Ship of Fools. That's our first lick. Okay, we're going to come up here, index finger comes to the F on the G string, 10th fret, and we play. Okay, and we let that sustain. So that's going to be a very quick kind of muted G, then to the C, and then a two fret bend up to this D note. Okay, and we're going to let it cry, cry back. And then very quickly back to the B flat, and then back to G on the 12th fret. Okay, so the B flat is there at the 11th fret B string. Okay, and it's very quick like that. All right. All right, there's number two lick. All right, we're gonna come in with the G, very faint, like, it's almost just like a dead note. All right, we're gonna bend up real fast though from C to D, and then we're gonna do it again and release back to our B flat at the 11th fret B string. Then uh, hit the G, back to B flat. So G, B flat, C, and then pick again and once we do a little one step bend. And we really want to get up to that D, but we're going to come back down halfway between C and C sharp. So, so don't go. It's not, it's somewhere halfway between these two notes, actually, okay? So. And then hold it nice and long, okay? And then we come back for our third lick. All right, that's our third lick here. And we're coming up from C to D. And then hitting that F with our pinky. And then we're gonna do the same bend and come up a fret to F sharp with our pinky. And yes, once again, and then up to G. And then a very quick follow bend up to that D again from C. So all in it would be. Okay, so right after that G, we do another quick bend. And then a little pink, there's like a little squiggle bend here. And we return to that G again, okay? We've been using that G kind of as a pivot point, right? Okay, so. Okay, now that is a very, very mournful sounding lick there. We're gonna start with uh, that G again. We've been using that a lot as our little pivot point. So we're gonna fret middle finger there on the 12th fret, 13 on the B, with our ring finger. Take off the middle finger off that G, come back one fret and bend up back into the same note. All right, and you may need some help with the, in, with the index finger. While you're up there, 
take your pinky and go here to the 14th fret, but don't relieve the pressure, okay? You can't let it back down. We're trying to create this melody by going. Okay, and you can bend it a little bit. That's what I do, I think. Then we're gonna come here to this blue note and relieve back to our F. Okay, so that's 13, 12, 10 on the G. Okay. That's very quick. That's our next little line. Now this is, a, it's kind of a continuation of what we were doing before where we would go. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're within the same fret. So we take the ring finger and the 13th fret, fretting C, very quickly. It's almost just a very, again, muted, okay? Many of these lines, they start with notes that are way back here and then they follow up with something that comes up and punches you a little bit. Okay, so we're hitting that F and then very quickly coming here to E and bending up. Then we're gonna bend up to it again. Okay, I'm doing a lot of upstrokes with a little bit of flesh from my index finger to give a harmonic. All right, not that excessive, but you know, every now and again, there'll be one or two of those that really pops through and it sounds quite nice and tender, okay? Um, but yet at the same time, it, it cuts really beautifully. Okay, and that's down to that D note, and then we're gonna slide up from C to D on the B string. And that way we can add a little vibrato, and it's super quiet, that one, okay? Again, taking that same idea that we just left off on using this we're gonna come back two frets and bend up again. So that's hold and then give it two more little quick pumps like that. Then come here and pre-bend half, half step, okay, from this D to F. So we don't pick that note, we just hammer on from nowhere and just go So the idea is you got to get that F in tune and let it fall down to that E. And then you pull it off to the C and then bend B flat back up to C without picking like I just did in that example. Sorry, folks. Okay. And you don't need to really, you know, slip, smash it. You just want to whisper. Like that. All right. And that's it. That's the last line from our, our verse, okay? The first time through anyway. So we're gonna come up to that D at the 15th fret on the B string with our ring finger. We're gonna bend and play very quietly from D up to a D sharp or E flat, okay? So that's gonna be like that. All right, and then we're gonna hit it twice very hard right after we... Like that, that's all right. Okay, and you can give it a little English on your way in each time. Okay, then hit the F, and then quickly jump back to this, this position where your index finger is supporting from the 11th fret, and you're gonna bend up two frets from C to D. That's two fret, two fret, one fret. Those 
of the notes we're playing, but we're not going to fret that note. We're going to bend into it. So it's... Okay. That kind of thing. I, I pulled down there instead of... Let's just break that down, okay? We're gonna walk chromatically up to that F, okay? So that means we're gonna need these four in a row. And I love this little trick. Whenever you're doing chromatic run between the B and the G string, or sorry, the G and the B string, I'm pointing at the <laughs> inverted, between the G and the B, if you put your pinky here, you're effectively playing the same note that's back here, which is tough, it's tough to go but that's one, two, three, four, five, right? Which is what we're playing, but it's easy to do this. Okay, or. So. That's the first line, okay? So we're gonna start on this, uh, that's the 15th, 17th, 18th fret with our pinky on the G string. You could play. Or if you wanted to be super inside, you could go start with the B flat, but I kind of like just the pure chromatic. And we're gonna trill back. Okay, and then we're gonna set up for playing over the F to E flat and then to that diminished chord. Second with that. All right, that is a lovely, lovely bit of chords there. Okay, so we're playing over this F to E flat, and okay, so F to E flat to this wonderful E diminished chord there. Okay. So we're t we're going off this little inversion when we're playing that that little bit there, okay? So we're going. Everybody can see that that's an F chord, right? We're approaching from E. And do, da, da, do, da, da, da. And we've come back to B flat, right? We're playing over so it's gonna be all right so that's the diminished chord so that's going to be 14 12 11 onto the B okay so 14 D G at the you know third 12th rather it's kind of that slip knotty thing. Okay, but that's just a diminished sound right there. So that's going to be. And we come up here, grab this G. And now we come into the fifth of our B flat chord. And then very quietly I went. So kind of put a button on it by hitting that B flat there at the end. So again. Okay, so we've just played that diminished. That kind of thing, right? And now we're still playing over that B flat chord. Okay, so that. Okay. So we come in here at the 13th fret on the high E, hit the G, 
Then jump here with our pinky and hit that note. Beautiful B flat and do a four note pull off. And slide back to F. Then hit the D string, uh, D note here on the 15th fret B string. And then pedal back to the F. Then shift again, four note pull off, starting with the pinky at the 13th fret, high E. Okay, and down this kind of E flat major um, seven arpeggio. Down into C sharp, uh, sorry, C minor. Okay, so that's C minor. So, so that's five flat three, two, one of the F. Okay, so all in. that little line all right so we're starting here at this uh, C note here using that same device that we okay so it's C F and then bend to F again from C uh, from E okay so F bend up to F down to this uh, E flat, then back up to F, and then do a do a three note trill, and then slide back one fret to the D. Then slide up to right. I'm gonna slide up to A and form this little partial D. Right, so we're just hinting at that D chord, but we're not playing the D note. We're coming up to the fifth of it and then hitting the third. That F sharp, okay, that's B string, seventh fret, okay. Okay, and we're resolving into that kind of G minor arpeggio. Half, that's half time triplet. So one, two, three, da, 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 da. So. Dun, two, three. Okay, then we slide up from A to B flat with our pinky, or you could do it with your ring if you want. So that's A to B flat. And then we set up for this. It's like a backwards rake. It's actually not that hard, you just come and down, but it's, it sounds super jazzy though. Back to the melody, right? So we're gonna start that with a, so that's a D and bending up into D sharp. So. See, I'm releasing it there. Release, and then come, come up with the, uh, we're three, four, up to sixth fret, all in the B string. And we slide in from two into the third fret. So that's up into three from two. Hit three again. 
then slide from six down to five on the G string. <laughs> Pivot over to the D string, 5 3. Okay, that's G F. Okay, those are frets, not intervals. I, it can be difficult. Sometimes I describe things in, intervallically, sometimes I'll give it to you like more like a tablature. With so many fancy pants chords in this song, it is easier for me to just tell you um, the frets rather than tell you keep changing what this is because over top of an F chord That's the root but over top of D minor. That's the minor third So I don't want to have to keep you know I don't want to call it by so many names dependent on what chord we're playing over. Okay, so again Then we come here Put your spin on that. All right, you can put a little stank on it. It's cool, all right? And that's 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 two times through the melody, okay? And we've made our way down to here, and we're ready to hit the chorus. And, you know, pretty much we just play the melody through the chorus, except for over the diminished chord at the end. We do this nice... in a minute to teach you that. All right, that's our first time playing through our last chorus, okay? So typically at the top of a new section, I will try to remind everyone in the audience or the band, <laughs> sometimes these are pickup gigs, uh, where we're playing these tunes, where we are in the structure of the song. So by playing Ship of Fools, right? Really nice. Everybody knows where we are at that point. So we're going to slide up to the D with our ring finger. All right, pinky to E flat. And pull off from D to C. Quick little, okay, so that's a, like a, eh, the A doesn't really sound so great to me, but the, this one right here, the A flat, okay, and then we're going to bend up, so bend up, grab the D note with our, on the B string, and then a quick little, to our D note. Okay, and that's it for that lick. Hey, I forgot to add this little lick. So it's a little rake on the third fret, first finger bars, the B and E string. And then I'd pull back here. times onto that uh, B flat on the third fret G string. Okay, so this is the last time through the the chorus and we're going to come in come up, hit the D and kind of stop short and then bend up into that. Okay, and then that same little cutesy pie, B, that uh, G sharp or A flat to the F. And then rather than going like we did the first time, we're gonna just sub out this note here, this F note instead of that D note. Except rather than bending it like I did, duh, duh, duh. I... and then I, I just, I think I just force a habit, kind of went down the G minor, pentatonic minor scale. There. All right, so that's it was later than I thought. All right, and I'm trying to 
cut that last one kind of tight. All right, and the way I do that is, and I kind of deliberately kind of pull my hand off and then muffle with my right hand. Okay, and now we play over top of our wonderful diminished chord. So over the diminished chord, we're going to take advantage of the fact that it's a symmetrical chord that inverts every three frets. That's just a fancy way of saying any shapes that actually arpeggiate a diminished chord invert and are therefore completely safe to play. They're all gonna be chord tones every three plus or three minus frets. So as we come up, right, this shape, right? Right, this is a chord shape. Right, so if we're taking that, we're gonna do this one little slide from C to C sharp here. Okay, and all those notes are all the same four notes that make up that chord. They're just jumbled up, okay? And because of its symmetric shape, you can safely move it up and down with impunity. I mean, it's completely game. Everything cool here, okay? So we're gonna start here on the fourth fret A string, and we're gonna play. Right? That's our first part. But really, once we do this, it's the same idea. We just aren't sliding just one fret. We're going to slide three frets. So that's up, slide, down, down, okay? my solo mas o menos uh, over ship of fools um if you learned anything liked anything were entertained even briefly please consider subscribing to my channel i would love to continue showing you what i know whether it's grateful dead stuff or you know picking exercises or other groovy bands and solos that i think you should check out to improve your playing please uh share like and subscribe comment below if you have anything to say no problem. All right. And uh, I am available for private lessons and stuff like that. A lot of folks want to reach out and uh, grab a lesson or two. That's terrific. You can uh, email me at jack underscore divine, D-E-V-I-N-E -E, at hotmail.com. Or uh, just, you know, leave, uh, leave word in the comment section below. Thanks a lot. Take care and peace.